Shanghai was known as a sleepless city at least since the 1930s, and it was a leading industrial center in China. Behind that was a crucial resource, electricity. In 1949, nearly 80% of the power supply for the city came from here, the Yangshupu power plant. Once the biggest thermal power plant in the Far East, its 105-meter steel chimney used to be the tallest structure in Shanghai. In 1949, it was American-owned. The American management of the Shanghai Power Company was gravely concerned. The company was already running low on fuel and deep in deficit. But there were more things to be scared about. Rumors were spreading that a scorched earth policy was planned by the nationalists and that they would completely destroy the power plant in their retreat. The second concern was the communists. After all, America had supported the losing side of the Chinese Civil War for years. What would happen to this biggest American investment in the Far East? On May 27, 1949, the Shanghai campaign was over. The American management's first worry didn't come true. During the Battle of Shanghai, power stayed on and water was running. Through the cooperation of the PLA and the communist underground, the Yangshupu power plant remained largely intact. And finally, the Americans met with their second worry. Much to the Americans' surprise, the communists were cooperative and tried their best to keep the American company running. The People's Bank provided a loan for the Shanghai Power Company, and the new government hastily assembled coal supplies from other parts of China to keep the Yangshupu power plant running. The chairman of the Shanghai Power Company, Paul Hopkins, was impressed. In his report sent back to the United States headquarters, he wrote, there is no question the communists are a new type of people who will ultimately bring great progress to China. The communists, in his eyes, were all significantly honest, hardworking individuals who lived on the barest essentials of food and clothing. He also found them intelligent, very frank in discussing problems, and with a good sense of humor. Paul Hopkins later found out that the only threat to the Yangshupu power plant were the nationalist air raids and blockade. He condemned them as utterly senseless. He cabled back to headquarters, stating that this would not alter the outcome of the war, but would destroy the Shanghai economy and compound the hatred and the misery of the people. But his complaints were to no avail. In February 1950, the power plant was bombed deliberately in a major air raid by the nationalists. The results were massive power cuts, business shutdowns, over a thousand casualties, and more than 50,000 displaced people. But the bombing and heavy damage only revealed the effectiveness and resilience of the new government and strengthened the people's determination to rebuild and develop Shanghai. The power plant continued to play an important role in the city's development and prosperity. In 2010, it was decommissioned to reduce the discharge of CO2 as an effort towards environmental preservation. Today, the site of the power plant is part of the city's most treasured historical legacies and it is now transforming into a cultural and recreational landmark. Together with many other industrial relics, they are turning the Yangpu waterfront from an industrial rust belt to a belt of public spaces and scenery. The transformed waterfront on both sides of the Huangpu River is becoming a world-class reception room for this thriving metropolis.